All right, here we go. Back after some technical difficulties, but uh, I got it done. I, I totally forgot I have to use a special version of OBS. I forgot why I uninstalled it, but. All right, so I actually took the moment to fix some other things that I knew would break. And that's how these streams are. It's mostly just troubleshooting streams. Whenever I do, do a live stream, the first 30 minutes has to be me fixing things. You know, as, as much as I make fun of people who have like tech teams who do all their work, uh, you know, there is a reason, like I do kind of need a wagey sometime to do stuff for me. I mean, I, I'm probably the only guy in the universe on YouTube who is like doing everything, who has a channel as large as I do, and I still do everything myself, like, and I'm still running off of just my personal computer. Because, I don't know, I've, it's, it's, not a, it's not a career for me. I'm not interested in this. I'm just making it up as I go, right? Um, okay, so in the interim, uh, I uh, got a couple messages to read, I think. So Joshua uh, sends in some Monero and says, Hey Luke, uh, have some freshly mined XMR. How do you strike the balance of using the internet to discover things but not needlessly wasting time there? As an example, I waste time on 4chan regularly. However, I also discovered your channel or website browsing 4chan. Okay, that, I didn't expect that. Uh, and I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, like, really, so, okay, a lot of people will look back at their past. And this goes for anything. If I tell you, like, you need to browse the internet less or play video games less, right? Um... I mean, here, here's how I used to think of things. If someone told me not to play video games, I would be like, oh my goodness, well, I learned all this stuff about geography and, I don't know, stuff, you know, different things from, like, civilization and games like this. You know what I mean? There, You always look back at bad things or even neutral things or time-wasting things, and you can see the small ways that they benefit you, but the real thing you're losing is, like, the opportunity cost. So... Would you have found my channel otherwise? I mean, I, you could have, like, I don't know. Like, I, I will go ahead and say that most people who find my channel do not find it on image boards or anything like that. Um, and I happily avoid, I know that if I were trolling the internet all day, looking for new st new stuff to consume, I might, find so I might find a needle in the haystack. But in general, it's just kind of a waste of time. Um, but I would say, in general... If you're on the internet, you know if you're wasting time or not. I will just, I'll just tell you that. Like, if you are just um, scrolling through the same feeds all the time and doing something, if if you like sit down and like five hours later you're like, I, what have I been doing for the last five hours, right? That means, I mean, you know that you're in a bad place, right? So I, I don't really find it honest to yourself about when you're wasting time. Uh, and for the most part, I mean, you know, browsing 4chan, oh, you might learn something on 4chan. You might learn something on Reddit. Um, but by by and large, it's just, you shouldn't be doing it, right? Um, it's just wasteful, you know what I mean? It's an opportunity cost. Like, you could be, there are more productive ways of finding things. Now, if, if I had to decide between 4chan and Reddit, of course I would choose 4chan. Because it's, like, less curated, it's less, like, top-down engineered. So you're more likely to run across things that are more unique, right? But I would say in general, like, if you're spending a lot of time on any of these sites, it's just a bad idea. So, I mean, that goes without saying. And I think most people, frankly, just have a sense of that. It's just, again, being honest with yourself about when you're wasting time. Actually, sends in some more Monero and says a follow-up. As I see it, the trade-off uh, for using the internet for discovery is that you risk wasting a lot of time, which I felt I certainly have at times. I've... I'm having a hard time determining whether it is worth it, though. I find it difficult to balance, and FOMO tends to affect me. Uh, depends on what FOMO is. I don't know. If, if, are you talking about that in, like, finance? Like, if you're trying to jump on a cryptocurrency or something? I don't know. Well, my... my I would also say that it's less bad if you're young. Um, you know, if you're, like, a teenager who doesn't have any responsibilities, and or maybe even a college kid who has a lot of time to kill you know, wasting some amount of time on the internet, like, it's not a big deal. As long as you're not, like, doing, like, porn or something, you know that's just eating your brain away. Um, but it's, like, less bad to just browse the internet. Now, at my age and in my position, the amount that I browse the internet is very, very little. And if I do, it's, like, 
I, I kind of feel guilty about it, and I'm like, oh shoot, like there's all these other things I could be doing in the meantime, right? Um, it, it's mostly just an issue of opportunity cost. Like if you are browsing the internet in lieu of doing something productive, or if you're if you're following up on trivial things when you could be doing something more important, right? That's something you need to avoid, right? And again, you you kind of know. I think most people have a sense of this, right? So, um. A donation from oh a five dollar donation from me because I had to check the donation thing. Yeah, I actually switched over a lot of my email addresses to a new server, and so in the break time when I was fixing OBS, I had to I went and checked all that. Um, actually, I should probably check if I'm actually am I streaming? <laughs> I probably should have actually. I just pressed the let's stream button. I don't actually have YouTube pulled up. Let's look at the chat and see if people are talking as if I'm. Um, I don't know. It's just usual inane comments. Can't tell. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think they're watching. All right. Comment from CD Cap. Sense of five dollars says, "Oremos et pro uh, et pro perfidis," which is an allusion to. Oh, I can't say who the perfidious ones are on YouTube, but that's an old prayer they used to have in the the Catholic Church, and they removed it in Vatican II. You used to like pray for like the the conversion of the Jews, but nowadays you can't pray for the conversion of the Jews because that's that in itself is anti-Semitic, you know. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, and anonymous, actually, I think this is from the last stream. Anonymous sends in uh, some Moneros and points me to what is this? Oh, it's like a Monero mining, a decentralized Monero mining pool. It's not really a full sentence, but. It's P2 Pool, I guess. A lot of Monero people probably know about that. And he asks, does Lindy Press have international delivery? Yes, if your country shows up on Lindy Press as a destination place, yes, it can deliver there. Uh, which is basically everywhere, except for I think Lulu is not fulfilling orders to Ukraine and Russia right now. Um, but I, I don't know why. Either way, it will stop. Like, if, if the site is set up so that if they can't deliver there, it will stop you from ordering. All right. Uh, oops, let me pull this up. Uh, okay. Mr. Based for 2069 sends in a little bit of Monero. Salam alaikum, brother. I am learning the Arabic script for the Quran. <laughs> Do you have suggestions on learning la non Latin scripts? Only, I would say that you have to make sure, I mean, specific advice for learning scripts, you just have to sit down and practice and learn it. The only thing that I would add to that is make sure that you are 100% good on the script before you try and learn the language. Um, like, really, learning a script is a different category from learning a language, and it will, it will be an inconvenience for you if you're focusing, like, if you don't fully know the script while you're learning the language or something like that. That's why in Chinese, you know, I recommend the John DeFrancis series because it separates it like they have two series of books. One is only on the characters and one is only on the language and the language is like written in pinyin, like it's written in Roman transli uh, transliteration. So you learn the spoken language at, you know, at its own pace and you learn the characters at their own pace. Now Chinese is a specific case where you really need like the the writing system is so different. You really need two different series of it. But for other languages like Arabic or, or like Indian languages where you just have a different script, which is kind of alphabetic or abjadic in the case of uh, Arabic, uh, it's I would just make sure you absolutely know it, know the script before going on to the language. Um, but, you know. And Arabic is a weird case because it's a language that is uniquely, like it has a writing system that is uniquely bad for its language. Because there are, Vowels, of course, you know, they have this ablauding kind of stuff. They have, you know, what do they call it? Um, what's the word in it? What What's the word in Arabic for it? Uh, where you have, like, a triconsonal roots and you change the vowels to change the meanings. What There's a word for that in Arabic. I totally forget what it is. It's so obvious. I, I think the binyan is what they say in Hebrew for it, something like that. I think a lot of linguists will refer to it by that. Um... But yeah, so uh, Arabic 
is weird because vowels are so morphologically important and how syllables are syllabified, but they basically just write consonants and you don't write vowels and it's just kind of a pain. So, all right, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, oh yeah, so on YouTube, don't give chats on YouTube because I don't really read those because they're hard to read. Uh, I will look at the chat right now. Why use a tiling window manager? The layouts often seem kind of pointless. Well, I mean, a lot of the, it depends on what you mean by tiling window manager. I mean, using one in general will change your life, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the layouts in DWM are kind of superfluous. Like I have, what, like eight different ones bound to different keys if I really want. And 90% of the time I'm just using the default one. Like, like sometimes I'll use, um, so I have like, T is the default one, and then capital T is like the default one, but with the master on top. And I use that sometimes if I want to have a like more wide window if I need to see longer text. So like, um, I wouldn't say they're useless, but some of like some of them have very niche use cases, and I probably use them less than other people. A lot of other people will switch to different like uh, layouts and stuff, but I definitely like the ability to do it. Um, Uh, Sean says, what are your thoughts on chess? If you don't play it, are there any strategies games you do like? Chess is, I really like chess. In fact, I'm, I'm low key. I, I wouldn't say like I'm, I'm good at it, but I know I have ascended past like a normal person in terms of like chess abilities. I'm definitely not able to like challenge people who are actually really good at it. Like, you know, people on the internet or whatever. Um, but I, I got into it within the past year, like all the different strategies behind it and like rules of thumb and stuff like that. And I'm always looking for people to play chess in real life because I only believe in real life. I don't believe in playing online. Um, but like I'm better than everyone else I know. There's like one or two friends of mine who can beat me, you know, one out of three times or something or maybe less than that. But um, like in general, I'm better than everyone else I know, but I wouldn't say that I'm good at chess <laughs> because, you know, I just, I'm around a bunch of normies, uh, who are just like really, um, you know, aren't that into it, but I, I actually really enjoy chess and it's chess is like one of the best games. I actually have thought about doing a video on the history of chess because there's not a video on YouTube on that. Like there's superficial things, but I mean like how has chess changed because the chess that we play now or the chess that was played even 500 years ago was not the same, especially compared to chess of 2000 years ago in like India or something like that. Uh, it's kind of an interesting historical thing. Uh, Stuart says, any thoughts on the framework laptop as a modern equivalent to the old school ThinkPads? The lack of track, track point is a bummer, but I think it's a winner in pretty much every other aspect. I mean, I, I don't know specifically the framework laptop I've probably been shown it I've been shown a lot of these oh old school equivalents of ThinkPad kind of things um but yeah as you say the track point the track point not having a track point is just it's not a computer to me I don't consider I I'm sorry I'm not gonna have like this extra plug-in thing or this stupid goofy pad thing I'm not gonna use that as a mouse I I'm just it's it's degrading to do and I know that Normies have gotten used to using it and it's mainstreamed and track points. You don't see them anymore, but they are so much superior. Like it's not, it's not, there, it's not even a question for anyone who has used a track point for like half a week. They have realized, oh, these are drastically better than anything else. Um, so the fact that if it's, if a track point is not on a computer, I consider it a desktop. Okay. You might call it a laptop. You might take it around. But when I, when I have, when I have to deal with the trackpad, I'm like, please, can you get a USB mouse for me? Because I'm not going to be able to do this. It's just so annoying. Like you have, you have it, a track point right, right in between all your fingers in the optimal position for a mouse. You can easily type and move your mouse simultaneously. That's why I have this keyboard because it has a track point. That's why I have the laptops I have. And why would you screw that up? Why would you move it to somewhere where you can't touch? Oh, now I got to go down here. And it's, it's just so dumb. It's just so pointless. Um, so yeah, they might be doing great things. I don't know about framework. I've seen other people who do it, but I don't give a crap if they don't have a track point. Like it just, 
It's an it is a non-starter. I I'm not interested. And that's not this isn't even like a snobbish thing. This is just anyone who's used it will never look back. You're never gonna look back. It's not a question. So. Mounted Scopes um, says, any opinion on the Rust language? Uh, first class docks, crates, and the obvious features of safe code make it seem appealing. Well, two things about Rust, even without, I don't know any Rust, but two things that I can't help notice about it. Firstly, despite, uh, okay, I will say Rust is like a cult. It's the only language that's really like that. Rust people are always doing things in Rust, they're rewriting things in Rust, they're doing all this weird stuff in Rust, and I, I want to say Stallman had a post on Rust a while ago, like why it's like, it, it has some like built-in proprietary libraries or stuff like that, that I don't know, I, maybe it's Rust, I, I don't want to get it wrong, but there are questionable things behind, behind it, but I'll just say Rust people, like, I mean, if I were to use languages, if I were to write a computer program, um, well, for simple scripts, obviously I would never use Python. I would just use shell. But if I'm going to write a program, write it in C or write it in Go. Okay, that's that's about it. And I've always had that opinion even before I knew any C or Go, just because those are the language, like C is Lindy. It's highly Lindy and it runs fast and it does thing, things well. And Go... Um, is kind of like it's a newer language, but it preserves it, it still it still runs fast it compiles uh, You know, it's it's more like in the suck list kind of you know, because they have like static uh, libraries and stuff like that um, So like there are reasons to use go even though it's kind of a new things a new thing and go is like an easy language It's like as easy as not as easy as Python because you do have to know some abstract stuff but like between languages, it's I mean, to me, there's just shell, there's C, and there's Go, and nothing else I'm really interested in. So Rust people, in particular, they're very, they're always trying to push, like, Loop, why don't you use this, oh my goodness, use this program, it's written in Rust, as if that's some advantage over using some other language that runs faster than Rust, or, or I mean, Rust, I think, you know, runs pretty quickly, like, it's comparable to Go, I think, but, um... I don't know. I don't know why people are so evangelical about it. And yeah, I mean, all the, all the people behind Rust, a lot of the people behind Rust, I don't want to say all of them, but many of them are your typical dyed hair, Ace Jai W types. And I'm not quite sure why that is, but I will just say that that is like a giant warning sign for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm not interested in Rust any more than I'm interested in, I don't know, Lisp or something like that. I mean, well, Lisp is like, I mean, it, it, you, Lisp is not a very fast running language. In fact, I want to say Lisp is like almost as slow as it's, it's probably Python slow or something like that, depending on, I mean, people study Lisp for like academic reasons, same reason they study like Haskell, how serious of a language it is. I don't know. Um, um, Vietnamese person since, Oh, you know what? Um, say in the YouTube chat, if the uh, Monero chat, things are appearing on the, the screen on, on, I don't know if you guys can see them, but you should be able to see notifications. I have not been checking that. So say it in the chat and I will hopefully see that in the chat. Vietnamese person sends in some Monero thoughts on the electric universe theory. Um, it's the idea that electromagnetism plays a much bigger role in explaining the universe. It denies stuff like dark matter and dark energy. Rather, stuff like dark energy is just unidentified plat uh, plasma. Also, the theory does not de deny the existence of gravity. Uh, I mean, I have read into that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I do have... I think I talked about it... No, that's not it. That's a book I talked about in the last podcast episode. Oh, I should say, for not related fans, you better be subscribed to the RSS feed because I have put out an episode that has not appeared on YouTube. So... There's one came out a week or so ago, right? Okay, yeah, the Monero donations are showing up. That's good. Um, I, I think I've talked about it in some live stream or something, but like uh, the Electric Universe people. I did read The Big Bang Never Happened a while back, and I think that's kind of in the same... I mean, this is more like plasma cosmology, but they have some of the same touches to it. 
I, I will just say, with both of those theories, plasma and electric universe theory, um, the stuff that I have found online is not very... Like, they, it, they don't really spell things out. Like, if you look this crap up on YouTube, it's people saying just, like, nothing. It, it's them just saying, oh, well, Tesla said this, and blah, 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 and here's all these generalities. It's just, like, there's no meat behind it, as far as I'm concerned. That's not me saying there's no meat behind it. I'm just saying... The resources that I've touched, I have not seen anything very substantial, right? Um, and of course, dark matter and dark energy, like... I mean, you don't need to explain those, because dark matter and dark energy are totally fake. Like, they're, they're, like they don't exist. They're just like a theoretical... Like, there's a theoretical need... There's a theoretical error within mainstream... Um, uh, I don't know, within, like, mainstream cosmology. So they have to come up with these concepts. Oh, well, our theories of gravity are wrong, but we don't want to admit that, there are, that our theories of gravity are wrong. So let's just assume that all of the extra gravity, it's because of this invisible energy that doesn't interact with things, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's so stupid, right? Um, I, I may have talked about this in the Fire Band episode of, of uh, Not Related. But, yeah, so I don't know that much about Electric Universe Theory. If you have a good resource on it, you can send it to me, I'll, and I'll look into it, but. Um, Chaos Feng says, what are your thoughts on tattoos? Um, tattoos are absolute, like, I totally re lose respect for people who have tattoos. Uh, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if your whole body is tattooed, or you just have one little tattoo. You know, your girlfriend has a tattoo on her ankle. No respect for people with tattoos. Uh, unless you come from a culture of tattooing. Like, if you come from, like, Polynesia. Like, they have an estat long-standing tradition of, I don't know, you tattoo things on your body. Like, it's, I don't know. It, it's a thing that they do. It's a thing within Western culture is one of the best indicator of, like, just an unstable person. Right? It, it is one of the... It, it is very... It's kind of a very bug man thing to do. Because it's taking something often like a pop culture thing and then literally writing it on your body like making it become part of your literal body it's just totally nuts um so it, it, tattoos are not respectable and there's actually a deeper esoteric level to tattoos i wanted i've been meaning to do a video kind of talking about this uh, let's just talk about the system we'll use words like the system now the system wants you to get tattoos and it doesn't just want you to get tattoos. It wants you to do many things that involve you making a non-revocable commitment to things. You know what I mean? And what, what I say by that is, I mean, here, here's something that happens very often in our culture, right? In America. We have all of these, like, here's something that happens all the time on universities, right? Oh, someone wrote the gamer word and mean racist things on, like, a dorm or they posted racist uh papers or something like that oh my goodness and oh we we all get mad about this kind of thing and there's this public outcry and people are, go out and do protests and they're all engineered by you know the usual suspects and all these ngos and blah 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 and then of course a week later they look at the camera and they realize oh it was like some black guy who put up all these like anti-black posters or something like you know at universities it's like you know that it's always fake in fact it's really it's basically always fake is it and remember when trump got elected and like there was someone i forget what it was someone was like uh, maybe like making there was some kind of anti-semitic phone call I, I forget what it like prank calling or i forget exactly what it was but trump said this some may he made some like passing remark like well, maybe it's just like, you know, maybe it was someone who's Jewish who's trying to get attention. And then, like, all the media's like, oh my goodness, that's anti-Semitic. And then, like, a month later, it's like, oh yeah, it was literally some kid in Israel who was, like, doing all these fake, like, race hoaxes, you know, to get people riled up. Either way, so that said, the reason, there's a reason that when one of these things happen, people have to go out and do protests. You to think, oh, is this something that's actually happened? They want you to get invested in it immediately. Because when it comes out that it's fake, you're going to feel freaking stupid and you're going to be too proud to admit that you were wrong. And that is how 90% of people work. Oh, well, I went out here and I committed to this cause and it ends up the cause was fake and I'm too proud to admit that it's wrong, right? That is like the greatest psychological trick. 
It's like, get people to commit immediately. Get, but, oh, Russia just invaded Ukraine. Let's get everyone to, like, get behind Ukraine, put Ukrainian crap all over the place. And then, like, maybe within the next month, people will learn about the actual context of it and they'll feel stupid for, I don't know, coming out in favor of them. But they're going to be too proud. Since they've already made public commitments, they're going to feel too proud and they're going to stay behind it. That's how it works. And it's the same thing. All of this is the talk about tattoos. It's the same thing with tattoos, right? <laughs> because tattoos are a way, if they can, if, if you end up with a tattoo, you are going to be committed to that thing that you got tattooed about, right? Very few people regret their tattoos, right? Not because they're getting something that's good tattooed on them, but because... Once you get something tattooed, you feel emotionally tied to that thing forever. Like you have to be proud and you have to endorse that thing forever, right? So that's why tattooed, tattoos are all screwed up. Now again, in freaking, you know, Polynesian culture, cultures where there's a long-standing tradition of tattooing, like life accomplishments or something like that, you know, th that might be different, okay? But in our culture, tattooing is like... Immediately, like, that is a trashy person. That is a consume product person. That is someone who, you know, I would not trust. In, unless they are constantly apologizing for the, ta the tattoos they got. It's just a trashy thing in our culture to get a tattoo. It's a vapid thing to get a, t a tattoo, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I, and this actually often happens when I see, like, an attractive girl in public. It's like, oh, she's pretty attractive. Ooh, oh, I see there's a little tattoo, like, on her arm or something like that. It's just like, I don't know. Now I look at you like a man, you know, you know what I mean? So, so tattoos are cringe, definitely cringe. So BJ, uh, says blessings on this Western Good Friday. Well, thank you. Blessings to everyone. I should have opened the stream more and it is Good Friday. So we should be celebrating that at least those Westerners of us. I said in the, uh, the beginning of this thing about cars. All of the words they're, they're talking about, oh, I don't know any of these words. It's just like, I don't know, in one ear and out the other. Um, guns are kind of the same way, right? Um, people are typing F in the chat. Oh, did it like shut down or something? Oh, no, no, okay. It was probably just bad internet for a second. Um, what was I saying? Um, so, yeah, I, I might eventually get into to guns and, and learn how they work, but it's just, I, it's not a big interest to me right now. But I do think absolutely it's really important that, you know, people have firearms and stuff. Um, because it's one of those things where, like, if you're if you're going to be self-reliant, even if you're not living in a place where you think you'll... I mean, you, you I expect never to have to use a firearm in my life, right? Um, that's the ideal. But when it comes down to it, you shouldn't... Like, it's, it's pretty crazy to think, oh, I think the government should have the right to use lethal force to defend me, but I shouldn't have that right. Or I shouldn't have that ability. I think that's kind of a silly thing. Um, so it's very, I think, I think they're very important, but I don't really know that much about guns and I'm not that interested. Um, uh, System D Enjoyer says, any thoughts on the America First movement? Um, I mean, that's the uh, Nick Fuentes guys. I mean, they seem all right. I don't really, I, like, I don't really consume product on, on the internet. I mean, that's not to, to say anything bad about them. They seem good. Uh, I have friends that watch their stuff. I just don't, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not big in the pop. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I will talk about sublimated political things, but I'm not really big into specific politics things, or I don't know. I I'm more like an abstract guy. I'm not against. I'm not against anyone who's doing that kind of stuff, though. Um, as long as they're doing it tactical. Eric sends in some Monero, just saying Z. Whoa, based. Um, Mister Based four twenty sixty nine sends in some Monero. I just I just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU Linux, or as I've recently taken to calling it GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs. Uh, well, thank you, thank you for that post. Now, now we all know. Did I ever do a video with that copy pasta? I know I did a couple videos of copy pasta. I don't know if I ever did that one. Uh, Stuart says tattoos are clearly cringe, but are they more or less cringe than having a bunch of, of piercings? Piercings are basically the same. I mean, piercings are just 3D tattoos. They're the same thing. I don't really see them as being different. Um, I, I, I do think there are some piercings 
that you can get away with. Like I had, I don't know, it depends on what it is. Now, obviously, ear piercings are pretty normalized, but I will say, I have respect for any woman who doesn't have her ear pierced. I will. I have instant respect for anyone. The 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 small, highly conservative minority of women who are so I don't, I don't know. They're they're even beyond ear piercing. They're so modest that they don't even pierce their ears. I have supreme respect for those women. Um, but you know, I don't look down on girls who get ear, their ears pierced because that's basically everyone. Um, but as it comes to other piercings, abnormal piercings, I will say I had a girlfriend who was pretty normal, um, and she did have a belly button piercing. It was a very subtle one, right? I mean, it, and she didn't, like, wear it out in her midriff, but she did have a piercing there. But um, in general, even that I, I would find suspect. But, of course, any, like, nose piercings, like, you know, studs or anything like that, pretty cringe. Um, girls with, like, the thing just like that, like, sometimes that's okay. But in general, it's, it's always bad. It's always bad. It's just, like, an issue of how... How much worse? Like, it, when I see a girl with, a, like, a little side, not, like, not, like, a ring through her nose, but, like, the little side study thing, like, that, like, I look at that as less bad as a tattoo, but in general, they're the same thing as tattoos. Alright, let me check the uh, chat for a sec. Well, no one's saying anything important. <laughs> Lanchad email server guide win. Uh, when I feel like it and when I'm confident, uh, well, when I'm confident in how to modularize it and give, you know, foolproof recommendations for everything. What's wrong with tattoos and piercings? We've just been talking about it for the past 20 minutes. Like, seriously, find a, a single non-vapid person with a tattoo. Just try, just try and find them. Men or women. Alright, now people are just posting stupid things. Alright, so, um, BJ says, Are you planning on finishing your PhD? No. <laughs> do you have uh, an interesting thesis idea? I mean, sure, I have many. I mean, all the papers I wrote on, I thought were very interesting. But um, uh, yeah, I have no intention of finishing a PhD uh, because it's too much work, and there are too like I know that it's not going to go to anything. Um, it's just not worth it. There was like when I first started, when I physically left my department before I like officially left, like when I left Arizona. I did think about putting like a binder dissertation out, just like a collection of some of my papings, papers edited with like themes and stuff like that. Um, but even like a, like, um, a, or well, I, th I thought too about doing a more traditional dissertation uh, project, but um, I was pretty burnt out. Not really, I shouldn't say burnt out. I was sick of the whole system at that point. And I was more like, oh, well, I'll go through the motions. Like I'll pretend to eventually work on this. And maybe if I feel motivated to do it, I will. Um, but yeah, it was just not, it would have been a waste of my time. So, you know, um, thankfully I did not do that. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that, you know, if it would have been super easy to do in the sense of like, it wasn't a waste of my time that I was doing other stuff with, um, it wouldn't have been bad to get a PhD. Although I do think it would have been a, um, I, I would say, I think given my experience with the university of Arizona, I think it would have been kind of dishonorable. For me to have a degree from them like i it would have kind of been like a badge of shame like i kind of wish i had just finished my phd at uga instead like because i thought when i was at uga and i was about to finish my master's i thought about eh, maybe i could just like try you can transfer into the phd program and just finish it there but i was like ah uga it's not like a big linguistic school uh, i'll go to somewhere more famous and talk to more famous people and blah 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 but that that's kind of superficial um you know, I had more of an intent of actually, you know, I wasn't totally, 
the, a black pilled on the state of universities then i was just kind of like oh things are kind of bad but oh i can make do but you know that's kind of delusional uh real donates ten dollars you mentioned once that you thought math was very useful i actually really love math but have stopped studying it because i've found very little use of anything i didn't learn in college uh or before to most situations even in software what do you find you what do you find it useful for also you're not actually 200 pounds are you um so when it comes to math well i don't know i don't know how old you are but i i kind of feel like the more i get into more like doing things like proofs are super useful doing uh like ha having calculus level knowledge of things and having like, I don't know, I, f I feel like programming and math, there's a lot of symmetry in, I mean, obviously in programming, you usually, you talk through things in like loops and stuff, as opposed to like summation notation or, th or things like that. Uh, but I guess that is, that is kind of high school level math. But I do think theoretical math, um, maybe you were listening when I was talking about math, like people wanting math for like economics degrees, like people, when I was looking at going into graduate school for economics, right? A lot of the schools would prefer math degrees uh, just because they had a lot of the more prerequisite knowledge. Um, I, I will just, I don't know, maybe it's just I run across things all the time where there are these highly rarefied things in math, like very obscure proofs that are very useful. Maybe you just haven't run across that I don't in your life situation. In mine, it has been very useful. Um, but maybe, maybe if you studied math in college, you learned a lot of things that weren't I don't know, we're more niche and you didn't run across, so I don't know. Um, also, you're not actually 200 pounds, are you? Um, no, well, I'm actually getting close to 200 pounds. I've been putting on weight, but uh, uh, I actually look back at the videos where I, I want to say like back in 2000 or like 2019, I was like disgustingly gaunt. I was like unhealthy. I looked ridiculous. I can't even, um, I, I'm basically a normal. The, well, the thing is, in America, there's no good weight to be, okay? If you're just a normal guy, you have to be, you have to go out and get really freaking buff. That's one option. But if you don't do that, um, Americans are just freaking fat. Like, Americans are just, like, all Americans, even average Americans, they're just fat. And they're just bloated people and, like, just standing around them. If you're a normal-sized person, you're just gonna look smaller. Even if you're taller than them, even if, like... I don't know, they're just unhealthy. Like, they just look bigger. You know what I mean? Like, they're not muscular. They're just, like, lumpy, you know? So I always feel like like there's no good weight to be if you're just a normal person in America because the norm is basically just to be fat, you know? And I'm not even fat. Like, most of these people you wouldn't look at and say, oh, that's a fat person. It's just like that's an average American. You know what I mean? That yeah, sucks. Non anonymous sends in sweet XMR super chat. That's all he says. All right, thank you. Um, Farzin says, um, "Are you pro tech or anti tech, or pro low spec tech, or what? What is that? Pro tech or anti? What does that mean? It's like saying, are you pro? I don't know. Are you pro? I I can't even." You, I can't even think in terms that simplistic. That's just, it's like saying, are you pro internet or against the internet? So I haven't thought about that. So, oh, people are saying F again. I guess that, oh, yeah. See, I, I just have outages of like two seconds. So it's no big deal. But by the time that I see people posting Fs, we're already back. So actually, it's still kind of yellow on my side. Is the library section on your website still being updated? It's one of my favorite places for discovering interesting books. Um, I have not bought as many books recently, but I've also not updated in a little bit. A lot of these books I have laying on the ground, I have not put in. Um, there are, there are a bunch of things that, yeah, there are a couple that I've not put in. I probably should update it sometime soon, but I, I don't, I haven't really updated my website at all recently. I'm moving servers around anyway, 
I've been moving, I think I mentioned I've been moving my email servers, been moving all this other stuff. Uh, so I haven't really been thinking about, uh, and I, oh, wait, did I say it in this stream or did I say it in the like stream that I started and then stopped? I forget. I put, so I've been making changes to base.cooking. I've been adding things to base.cooking, right? <laughs> so after a year, I was like ignoring the repository for like a full year because it was too hard to manage because it had some crappy static site generator that kept breaking and I just got sick of it. And it was like, I don't know, there was too much traffic on it and I was just, or traffic in terms of people wanting to add stuff and change stuff. And I was just like, screw it, I'm gonna ignore it. And I'm just gonna, maybe I'll fix it later. Well, this week I actually, in earnest, I learned Hugo. So I learned how to, I, I've used Hugo before. It's a static site generator written in Go. Um, and I used it like five years ago to make some simple sites for some people. But I, it was only then, now that I was like, okay, I'm gonna actually learn this because I know it can do tagging. And I really want tagging for my own personal website, but I also especially want it for base.cooking. That's one of the things I used that static site generator for that was so bad. Um, but I, um, what was I gonna say? Um, so yeah, I, I rewrote base.cooking in Go, or well, in Go, using Hugo, I should say. Um, so you can go to base.cooking, subscribe to the RSS feed because I'm not, now actually started putting up new recipes. I think I added four today that people had submitted like a year ago and I will add more and I will make a lot of changes and it's just a lot better now, just infinitely better, so. Okay. Uh, Farzan F says, have you read the book Anti-Tech Revolution by Uncle Ted? Um, I have not read it in full. However, I do actually own that book. I have it because someone sent it to me at some point. Some company that prints them. Where is it? Ugh. Oh yeah, here. They sent me two books. Technological Slavery by him. And the anti-tech revolution, why and how? And so this is by, who is it? Fitch and Madison Publishers. They sent me these for free. Um, and they said I didn't have to do a, rev a review on them or anything. So actually this is the first shout out on my channel they're getting. They sent me these like two years ago. Um, but no, I have never actually read anti-tech revolution or I may have like looked at a section of it that was like referenced somewhere, but no, I haven't read them uh, as a thing, so. I'm gonna put these back up before they uh, become just more of those books that are sitting on my desk right now. My desk is just accumulating more and more books that I'm doing stuff with. Um. All right, BJ says, I'm in a master's program. This is, uh, he was talking before about PhD uh, candidacy and all that kind of stuff. I'm in a master's program in economics. We were l learning about Malthus in one of our classes. We had this assignment called The Gift of the Dying, The Tragedy of AIDS and the Welfare of Future African Generations. It was about how AIDS is good for Africa because the Africans who survive can consume more product. Even some of the liberals in my class were creeped out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Even if liberals are creeped out. Yeah, I mean, so the not related episode, which I have not put on YouTube, I might eventually, but you have to go to notrelated.xyz and subscribe to the podcast. Um, but yeah, that was actually on Malthusianism and like the idea, like the idea that the world is overpopulated and you know the Bill Gates kind of people, um, uh, Paul Ehrlich, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that that's pretty funny though. Like Mal like economists have a weird relationship with Malthus. Like I feel like most of them like kind of dismiss his things nowadays. Um, I did not learn about him. Uh, at least in my undergrad, at all. Like, I don't, I didn't hear his name dropped once, but, you know, when you read other economists and stuff, they'll talk about him in passing. But I, I don't think people take him, like, the population stuff too seriously now because it, there's a sense in which, obviously, there's something wrong with the, like, the, the model's not so direct as he anticipated. But, yeah, it is, it is nutty, like, these people nowadays who, the population control people, um, like Bill Gates, who on one side pretends to, wanting to be desperately... Um, intent on saving you from the highly deadly coronavirus that people now forgot about, um, which now apparently doesn't exist after Ukraine. Um, but uh, on, on the other side, on the other side, he's very worried about the world being overpopulated. Very interesting combination of beliefs. 
but um, there's a lot to say about those people, but um, Daniel Hayden uh, sends in ten dollars. I think this is on what is this Venmo or something? I don't know if I have. I don't know if there's a message. Oh, okay, there is a message. Have you ever? personally known someone with an anxiety disorder what advice would you give them i'm not convinced that there is such a thing called an anxiety disorder that has symptoms other than saying that you have an anxiety disorder i mean <laughs> it's not a, it's not a thing like how do you tell if someone has an anxiety disorder if they say they have one right um actually when i was in uh back when i lived in the Bugman city and I, I lived in a miserable place and had a miserable life, or, you know, not that miserable of a life, but um, there was underlying existential dread. Um, I I remember in college, when I lived in Atlanta, I had, like, kind of panic attacks. Like, not, not a, frequently. But I remember I had the Spanish class I'd go to, and I would randomly have, like, panic attacks. Now, that is, when you think of things that are characteristic of me, a panic attack is the last thing in the world that you would associate with me. But weirdly enough, there was this brief period of time where I had this. And it's just, you know, it's just the psychological thing. It's just a psychological rut that people get in of, oh, like panicking and then panicking about a panic attack. I'm like the least panic person in the universe. But for this very brief period of my life, again, living in the city, this miserable city where uh, it was just terrible. And for whatever reason, I just got ner not even nervous about the class. Like, I didn't give a crap about any class in college. But it's just one of those psychological holes that people get into. Either way, like, they're not serious things. Like, the thing about that, like, would I call that an anxiety disorder? No, it's just like, you know, I lived in a screwed up place. Um, you know, my life was fine at the time. It's just like, when you have, like, when, when people are not self-actualized, I hate that term, actually. Let's, let's rephrase that. When people aren't living normal human lives, you never know what their psychology is going to throw at them. Ultimately, my belief about anxiety disorders, okay, and that your friend who you're asking about probably doesn't want to hear this, but my actual theory about anxiety disorders is that when your brain is freaking bored and you have everything you need and you have nothing to do and you have nothing in your life, your brain will invent fake problems. And that's what anxiety is. Oh, I have everything I need, but oh man, I need some struggle in my life. So let me like invent this thing in my head. Okay, that is ultimately the only thing. And when I look about myself, when I had that kind of ooh, anxi ooh anxiety, I don't, wouldn't even use the term, but when I was having this kind of panic attack, that's ultimately what it was. My brain was freaking bored. Like I, I was going to this class I didn't give a crap about. I already knew everything about it. Um, you know, I was just wasting my time phoning it in. That is like a great example of my b brain just being freaking bored and trying to entertain itself with nonsensical problems, right? That is what brains do, okay? All these anxiety disorders, you're never going to, you're never going to find someone who actually has like trouble in their life actually has like, you know, someone, someone who's like, um, I don't know, really like, I, I don't know, someone with like a real job where they're working hard and blah, blah, blah. They're not going to, Oh, like I'm really worried about my mental health and my anxiety. No, no. Like that is stuff that people who are pampered and live in first world countries think about because anxiety is like a, it literally is a first world problem. Right? So Yeah, start yeah, start start lifting, bro, as El Dante says. That's correct. <laughs> no, really though, like all of these psychological problems, psychological problems. I mean, the best way of wording it is, it's just people's brains trying to entertain themselves because they don't have real problems in their life. Or no, I'm not trying to say like having real problems is a good thing, but they don't have you know in the Kaczynski terms, they don't have the power process. They're not like accomplishing things. They're not accomplishing real things. They're not, they don't have will to power. They, they have a life that is out of their control. And they're, they're waging. They're being, you know, wage cucks. They're, they're having miserable lives. And, um, you know, they, I don't know, they, they're going nowhere. So, oh, yeah, their brain creates this, like, fake problem that they're going through. And that, that is the essence of a panic attack. Because a panic attack is literally just something that happens when you're panicked about having a panic attack. That is, like, peak peak, get me out of where I'm living. I'm in a, a crappy, I don't know, life environment, you know? So, and luckily I moved out of there, but actually I just got over that, but you know, I still lived in the city for a couple more years. Um, so another comment from a Vietnamese person, I'm not fully sold on the electric, uh, universe theory. 
I just thought I'd explain dark matter better and wanted to know your thoughts on it. Anyway, thoughts on race mixing. You can ignore this for YouTube if need be. Uh, like, are you against it on a mass scale, social engineers, or against it in general? Uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it YouTube friendly. I would say in general, like, well, well, we'll keep it in also Christian terms. Like, I don't think it's a sin, but I think it's ill-advised. Like, I would think it, like, I would think of it as being kind of, um, I'm not, I'm not going to explain my reasoning on YouTube, but I will say, I think it's kind of like marrying, like, a third cousin. That's kind of, like, how I would consider it. Like, it's ill-advised, but I'm not, like, you know, in a mass phenomenon, it's clearly bad and it's clearly worrisome that, like, the media is, like, forcing this on people because, obviously, they have ulterior motives. And we don't need to talk about that on YouTube because we can't. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, at an individual thing, like, if, if I knew someone, like, marrying someone of a different race is not, like, inherently bad, but it might be, like, because because you're, you're, you're separating, like, it's best to be married to someone you have a, co a common cultural and, and biological uh, commonality with, right? Um, and I would go into more, the biological side, I would go more into that, but we can, maybe if we do a peer tube stream, um, but we could at least say on the cultural side, it's, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing to like, um, not just to raise a child, but to, um, to, to kind of merge families in a way that, I don't know, doesn't give a cohesive background to your children. And, um, it, and it's kind of a bug man thing. And once I became like, when I, I used to have lots of girlfriends who were not white. Like, when, in my college years, I, man, I had, like, I, I don't know, like, I dated, like, every race under the sun. But when I became less of a bug man and more, like, real, oh, okay, I gotta think about uh, marriage and settling down and things like that, you very quickly, race mixing becomes, like, not even a, a temptation, you know what I mean? Like, um, anyway, that's enough about that. So... Talk about curd denialism. Nah, it's, now it's just going to be a joke. I'm not going to talk about curd denialism. Uh, okay, let me check donations and then I will check the chat if we don't have any. Um, aliens are subterranean. What are people even talking about? Messes up genetic resistances to endemic diseases, and it's hard for your kids to find an organ. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there there are things like that, but that's not the real re. Like there are there are little reasons like that not to, you know, do race mixing or whatever. But, um. But of course, the normie the 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 thing that the normie puts out is this like fake idea of like hy hybrid vigor. Ooh, yeah. If you look at dogs, dogs, which of course, do there aren't races of dogs. There are breeds of dogs. We basically like mutilate dogs to be these genetic abominations because we want them to look funny. And then of course, when you hybridize dogs, they're much healthier. That is not the case in humans. That's like, like human races are all longstanding existing groups that can survive in the real life. Um, Um, thoughts on the Pentagon report saying UFOs account for unplanned pregnancies. <laughs> Haven't heard of that one. Uh, all right. No one's saying anything. Thoughts on NordVPN. <laughs> so I've been meaning for years. Actually, okay. I've been meaning for years to do a video on why VPNs are absolutely stupid and retarded and only normies use them. Um, <laughs> but I haven't had the chance. Or, well, really. So a couple years back when I was about to do this video, I want to say Wolfgang did a video on this. 
And it went real, it went like viral. He got like millions of views. Actually, I think that video like made his channel because now his channel is like bigger than mine. He used to be a pretty small channel. Um, but he did this really good video on why VPNs are just like stupid. They're just dumb. And I, but I kind of feel like now time has passed. A lot of other people have done, well, some people have done videos on why VPNs are dumb too. Uh, but I kind of feel I need to give my own takes on this because I, uh, you know, and plus, like, I don't know, people still ask me, like, after he did that video originally, people chilled out about VPNs. They stopped asking me about them. But now they're, I don't know, Ooh, what VPN should I use? What VPN do you recommend? Listen, VPNs are the stupidest thing in the universe. Okay. They're flat. I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll shoot my wad on this video. I'll go ahead and tell you on this live stream. I'll go ahead and tell you what the video is going to have in it. Why are VPNs dumb? Do VPNs protect your privacy in any way whatsoever? No, they don't. Because here's what happens, okay? You have an ISP that gives you internet, okay? Mine is Soylink, okay? So Soylink sees what connections that I make on my on their internet, right? Obviously, right? Uh, now, of course, they don't see what I'm doing. They do see what sites I connect to because everything nowadays, of course, is over HTTPS, basically. So if, you know... You know, let's say you go to base.cooking, uh, your ISP knows that you went to base.cooking, but they don't know what recipes you're looking at because the, the pages you go to, that is done over a, an encrypted connection, right? So they might see, your ISP can see the sites you're going to, but they don't see like anything, you know, the specific stuff, right? Um, so uh, firstly, a lot of people have the idea that your ISP can see every little page you go on, and that's just not true. Like they can see in general what, what things you can, like what sites you connect to and blah, blah, blah. But like specific stuff nowadays with HTTPS and just general encryption on the internet, that that's not an issue. Okay. Now, why are VPNs stupid? A VPN is just another internet service provider. So if I got a VPN, what I do is of course I'd still have Soylink, but what I would do is I would pay this VPN, which is the stupid part, to be my extra internet service provider. I would route all the connections that Soylink would see through this VPN. So now the VPN, which I'm paying them for this, now they see 100% of the things that Soylink would otherwise see. Now your privacy footprint is not being improved in any way. In fact, it's now worse because you have a VPN. You're just paying this company, uh, which of course you have, you know, you, you're... Uh, all your payment, your credit card information, all that kind of stuff is with them. Unless you're paying in Monero, right? They have information about you. Um, so now you have this extra layer of abstraction. And of course, a party, in, now in my case, it's Soylink. In your case, it might be this VPN. They still have all your internet connection, right? They still have all of that kind of crap, right? It doesn't make a difference. But now, the real reason VPNs exist, you might have, oh, VPNs are all over the place. Every free, oh, PewDiePie tells me to get a VPN. Everyone's telling me to get a VPN. Why is everyone recommending them? Because they don't actually do anything, right? They, they really don't. Like, and, and of course, people in the comments are probably already saying they're also probably freaking honeypots because a lot of governments, including the United States, have these laws where companies like that, if they get subpoenas from the government, they can't even tell you that they are subpoenaing your information, right? So the government knows, oh, all the privacy-oriented people, they're all using VPNs, right? So we can just tap the VPN and get all the information, right? We don't have to go to all these different ISPs and do the, all this other crap. We can just go to the, the VPN. So it's not an improvement there. But the real reason VPNs are shilled is because what's happened is there are all these freaking data centers out there. People just buy computers. They, they buy all these servers to do different things. Oh, cloud computing, all this garbage. People spend thousands of dollars to, to, to you know, have basically server farms to do different things. But eventually, you know, when they have nothing to do with their machines, they're like, well, shoot, how, how can we make money off of these machines? Oh, I know, let's route internet traffic through our machines for no freaking reason. In other words, let's just use them for the cash cow, which is a VPN. We'll tell people, ooh, hide your internet traffic from your ISP by giving it all to us. Pay us to give it to us, and we'll just route you through your servers. Pay, you know, $5 a month for literally nothing. And we can have, you know, on one little server that costs us, you know, $5 in a power bill, we can make hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, who knows how much they're making, right? You know, they, they can make a huge amount of money on this. So this is where VPNs come from. They're like a giant cash cow that offer nothing in terms of privacy. Like if you, if you just, 
Like, if you really want that level of privacy, I mean, well, if you want to subvert your country's block list, you can use a proxy or you can just use Tor, uh, you know, to do specific things. But like VPNs are, are useless for privacy. They, they don't do anything. It's very, they are like the biggest placebo ever. They don't, I mean, if anything, they are increasing your, your attack vectors and they're, you're just giving money to some server farm guy who had nothing to do with this server. Like, that's it. He's just routing your traffic through you. For, I mean, you're routing your traffic through him for no reason. It's pointless, you know? So yeah, VPNs are totally pointless. Um, like, you can probably imagine some specific use case as for why you want to route your traffic through it, but you could just host one yourself or something like that, right? It, it's not like... I don't know. It's 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 the most normy thing in the universe. It's as normy as people who use VLC instead of MPV. Like it's VLC level normy. Like that. And when I say that, I don't mean you're an idiot if you do it. I mean like, okay, you're like at basic level. Like you're start you're starting to get your feet wet. But when you really start to think of things, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is stupid. In the same way that you'll be like, well, when you first come from Windows, you're like. Oh my goodness, heckin' VLC is fantastic. It can actually play things without having to download all these stupid codecs. But then you're like, oh yeah, MPV is like infinitely better. So. Someone way back in the day made this like, uh, I know a little bit about technology, um, uh, starter pack thing, and it had like VLC and like, you know, Moo Torrent. Oh. Ugh. Oh shoot! Well, I I actually gotta stop the steam, uh, steam, steam. I gotta stop the stream sometime soon, probably within the next thirty minutes, because I'm gonna have company over. Um, Anonymous says, "What are your thoughts on the growth of cloud computing in the la in the next decade? Do you think there's a future where com consumers are limited to mid-range hardware that only servers to connect to uh, FAA and G? I guess that's Facebook, Apple, something, Amazon." Uh, Netflix and Google cloud computing servers. Think Google, Saudi, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's super worrisome. I mean, the most annoying thing is people, more than ever, like hardware has never been cheaper in terms of storage space and all this kind of stuff. And it's never been easier to get files. But cloud computing is just like insane. And I, I don't know, like I really think that people should go out there more, oh, I'm an activist for having files on your own computer as opposed to cloud computing. I think it's really worrisome. You should do basically zero computing in the cloud. Um, you know, that that's just, I, I don't know. So I don't know where it's gonna be. Uh, the direction is definitely to cloud computing because that's what all of these companies want. They want all of your data. They wanna be processing everything you do. They, don't, they want your computer to be just a terminal that hooks up to like a Google network. And you know, they already have Google Docs, like normies are, are like, they don't even have like document processing on their computer. Like Google Docs has basically taken over from Microsoft. It's it's crazy, but it, it's wor. I mean, you wouldn't think that there'd be something worse than like Microsoft Office, but yeah, Google Drive is infinitely worse in terms of like user freedom, user privacy, like uh, extensibility. Like you have to be connected to the internet or have this stupid Google Drive application on your computer. It's it's just so stupid. Anonymous says, everything I'm interested in doesn't make me any money. I tried the nine to five software engineer thing and I just hated it. I'm so poor and I want to be able to support a family in the future. If I had a family, excuse me, I need some water. If I had a family, um, if I had the family now, I would do whatever it takes. But in the meantime, women just see me as a broke boy. Well, <laughs> broke boy, that's pretty sad. Um, uh, I'm not going to give you life advice. I'm getting sick of life advice or specific things. Thing that this sounds close to to being like a pity post, so I don't want to give you too much attention for that. But I don't know what you want me to say. You uh, get get motivated. Like <laughs> I, I can't give you anything more than a like a snippet of well, why don't you just like do something you enjoy? Uh, listen, the reality is, especially when you're young, um, you got to do what you got to do. Like, you know, I didn't enjoy what I was doing for like my early 20s, my work or anything. I mean, even the jobs I've had recently, I don't especially enjoy. Um, but you can't like tether, you can't like identify with that. I mean, I would just focus on making money, making a game. Okay, that's all I got to say. You got to like, I, I know you say, oh, if I had a family, I'd be more motivated. You got to think of it in terms of like, 
I don't know. In fact, you should be arrogant. You should be. You should make money and m be that guy who's always complaining about, or not complaining, always talking about how much money he's making. That like become someone who is annoying to other people. Make that your thing. Okay. Start there. Like try to be annoying in terms of oh this guy's so amb he's always talking about making money and all he's working up all these schemes. That's what I would aim at. If you don't have anything else to work for. Try and be one of those guys. And that might say, oh, you know, no one wants to be that. No, you do want to be that. Like, you want to make money. There's nothing wrong with making money. And if you're not, like, driven by the things you do, you might as well just make money in the meantime. Okay? So if you have some sucky software engineering job, um, I mean, if, if, if it's just, like, you maintaining stupid things that, you know, you have a lot of free time for, I would just, like, I don't know, monetize that and uh, work on your own projects in the meantime. But, you know... Man, I, I can't tell you if you're just like, oh, I, I feel bad and I don't know what to do. Hoistein says, what do you think about the fact that the vast majority of Christians are Gnostics? They're definitely not Gnostics. I don't really know where that um, con is coming from. Uh, it depends on what you mean by Gnostic. Uh, they're, they're definitely not Gnostics, though. I mean, most liberals are probably Gnostics in some way, but, uh, but it's a very, I'd say, much more abstract um, a level, uh, simp sends in 750, any hot takes on cognitive science? Personally, I feel like most theories about cognitive science are just so stories. Also, also how tall are you? I mean, yeah, they are just so stories. I mean, that's what, that's basically what it is. I mean, cognitive science, I mean, it's not a real field. Like there's neuroscience and they can do, I mean, neuroscience is basically just like feeling how hot the brain gets and trying to guess it, you know, what's going on there. Whereas cognitive science is like, I mean, it's, it's kind of like this interdisciplinary nonsense field where it's like, oh, well, you just kind of name drop different things and there's not like a systematic way of looking at things. So COGSI is like, I don't know, it's kind of like, I, I guess when I was in my PhD program, I was kind of like the COGSI guy, like I was one of those COGSI people, but it's really just kind of a generalist thing. Like there's no systematicity, systematicity to it. And theories about it are just hit and miss because most of them are from like, oh, here's a guy who has a background in linguistics or here's a guy who has a background in psychology and all of them kind of cater their things to their own, uh, I don't know, purposes. Um, and how tall am I? I don't know, normal height, like normal, I don't know. I, I'm just below six foot. Like I'm probably, this time of day, I'm probably 5'10". In the morning, I'm 5'11", but I'm, I guess since my height starts with five, I'm a manlet. So, that's how it is. That's how it is on the internet, and also in real life. Uh, uh, Farzin says, What are your thoughts on religious conversions? If a non-Christian converts to Christianity, is that cringe or based? I mean, obviously, I would con consider that based. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know why. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, religion is not just, like, cultural... I mean, well, if you think religion is true... By definition, it is not just something cultural. Now, there are cultural aspects to religion. It would be cringe if you, like, abandoned your religion to become, like, some kind of freaking Reddit atheist. That would be cringe. I would view Islam as, as an improvement on that. But, um, yeah, of course. I mean, I believe Christianity is true. Therefore, I believe any conversion to it is good. Um, could you do it in a cringy way? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know of it, but... Um, Yeah, five eleven manlet king, king of the manlets. I know, I've heard the worst of it. It's like that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna at my cousin right here because he's um, now he's taller than me, but he's also like he's at that point where he's like five eleven point nine 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 nine, and he constantly is talking about how important it is to be six foot and how important it is to be. You know, he's like he is like I'm actually not the king of the manlets. I'm prince of the manlets. Okay, I'll say that because he is like. It, it, that perfect, it, it's it's that like 4chan uh, manlet mindset where it's just constantly thinking about height and he brings it up all the time. So he he actually deserves the crown of king of the manlets. But I mean, probably in the morning, he's probably... Anonymous sends in some XMR. He says, hello, Luke, are you mining XMR? No, I'm actually not. Uh, not right now. Uh, I've actually never, never really tried to do it. Um, maybe I should, but. Yeah. 
99 IQ is definitely IQ lit. King of the IQ lits. Actually, really, no, it shouldn't be that. It should be higher than that. Because let's be real. I mean, probably most people talking about IQ, they have higher than average IQs in general, like including Redditors. Um, although I really think Redditors are probably averaging around 100. But I, I would say like King of the IQ lits is like maybe around like 125. I don't know, maybe, maybe we can be more sympathetic. Maybe we can say, like, 120, something like that. Because that's where someone is, like, smarter than normies, but they're not really smart enough to be, like, the smart guy. You know what I mean? Or maybe they were the smart guy if they, if they were around dumb people. But it's like, oh, it, it's basically, I'm slightly smarter than the other Redditors. Like, and, and they're constantly trying to prove how smart they are. Constantly the kind of person who like corrects people's grammar as if grammar is anything other than like faking gay rules um, Like someone who's really like that that like that is like king of the brainlets Really that's really how we should put it king of the brainlets where it's like some guy who's like just I don't know he, He's just at the cusp of being intelligent, but he's not it's not quite there so Oh, all these people saying, oh, my IQ. Yeah, a lot of people saying their IQs are like 115. Sorry about that. Sorry to roast you. Hey, you're a standard deviation smarter than normies, right? That counts for something, right? I mean, the, the issue with IQ is just as long as it doesn't make you arrogant. Like if, you're, if your IQ is 110 and you know that your IQ is 110 and you don't pretend to be someone who's like 140, you're going to be fine. Okay. I really gotta stop the stream in a second. I also drank too much caffeine. I'm kind of like jittering. I don't know if you can tell. I'm kind of like getting hype. IQ below 150 is low. Kaczynski had 167. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what uh, which what we could say the cutoff is. Maybe we could put it higher. But I also don't know. Like as things get higher with IQ, things get a little fuzzier. Um. Because people will just put out like wild numbers, uh, especially what the most absurd thing is when people like try to estimate historical people's like IQs, which is the stupidest thing in the universe. All right. Anyway, also like I'm not entirely like I'm not entirely sold that like IQ as a whole on is a real thing, but you know people who deny it outright are kind of silly. Okay. Don't look we doesn't look like we have more donations. Okay, I'm actually um I'm probably gonna stop the stream because I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta clean up my house a little because again I'm having company. So Oh my goodness, looks like my ooh, looks like I'm I'm like at a hundred percent CPU usage again. Wow, just in time. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up YouTube to close out the stream, but if you have last minute comments or donations, just send them. Oh my goodness, my computer is going so freaking slow. I wasn't even moving things around for most of that, so I didn't see how slow it was moving, but um, yeah. See, my bottleneck now is not internet. My internet speed is good. My CPU usage, that is the thing that's always the problem now. So freaking hungry. You know what? I didn't really eat anything today, but I guess it's both. No, I did eat a little bit. It is supposed to be a fasting day for the West, so I should probably do that. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I might just stop the stream like without logging into YouTube. I'll just check, check donations, see if they're last ones. Manlineal sent in some Monero says, nice haircut, Boomer. 
Thanks. You like my new... Oh, yeah, I, I changed the thumbnail. Dang it. Before it was the mulatto perm. Yeah, I, I need to get a mulatto perm. That's what I need. Then my hair would be very much bussing. Okay, I'm just going to turn off the stream. I'm going to I'm going to say that's the end because it's like lagging so much on my side. So, I don't know how it is. All right, thanks everyone who showed out. Um I'm I am going to be busy all of Easter week. Uh I might do videos, might do vlogs. Oh, go on PeerTube. I've put up videos that I have not put on YouTube recently cuz I'm too lazy to put things on YouTube. So, I don't do it. Uh, like, I'll upload them to PeerTube, and then I'll be like, I'll release them on YouTube in a couple days, and then I'll forget about it. So, you know, whatever. So, check out PeerTube. It has more stuff. And the... Wait. 